Hello everybody, I am Ben from Team Panic and it is again time for another ARC monthly meet. Now, uh, if you've been following the channel, over the past five weeks I have had four fights, including the one that is about to happen. Uh, so that has not given me a lot of time to build robots and R&D and all that kind of stuff. And that led to this guy, the little dustpan robot that we took out to the Sane Antweight Cup. Uh, so I'm in another very similar predicament. I need a new set of robots very, very quickly uh, because the April month meet, which is what we're going into, is 2v2s and A-League for ant weights, which means I kind of need two robots. I could do it all with one, but if it gets busted in either league, then it's out for everything. Uh, so that's not great. So we're going to try and get two different robots up and running in this video. So to do that, I have two juice bottles. So we are going to upgrade this guy two different ways using two different juice bottles. One of these is going to become the juice monster, which is going to be uh, my homage to the Crave monster, which is around the place on YouTube. If you haven't seen this thing, it is hilarious. I'll make sure I put some links down below. Crave monster is awesome. We're going to do our very own version out of a juice bottle. And then I have a different juice bottle, which we're going to build a new version of this and hopefully add a hinge in here. I would really, really love to actually have some way of dropping people out of, out of the bottom of the robot. Uh, yeah, so that this thing is a little bit more effective than it was at ARC. Okay, that is the plan for today. Let us get printing and cutting juice bottles.
Okay, so it is time to fight, and I'm not going to show you all the fights from this weekend because there are a lot of them. Uh, because I was, of course, in 2v2s and in uh, the ADIV. So this is the first 2v2 fight, and I wanted to show you that, guys this one because this is the first use of the Grabber Robot, and it was very clear right from the start that this thing had huge balance issues. There was so much weight in the back, uh, it just kind of tipped up every single time. I tried to use it, but the grabber did work really well. As you can see here, I had uh, kind of two modes on the remote. One was a close down, like a bite down mode, and one was a open the jaw wider mode, and otherwise it just kind of sat in a neutral position. Uh, so that worked really, really well, and it was actually quite helpful and quite useful in grabbing other robots. But like I said, it was very back heavy, which meant that if I accelerated too fast, I ended up on my back wheels, and also, if I uh, opened and closed the drawer too fast, I ended up on my back wheels. So, probably wasn't the best that I used the faster servo or the servo that I'd hacked for faster uh, speeds in this robot. And there is another disadvantage to that, which will come up in half a second here. Uh, so, yeah, now that the pits are open, we've got a good chance of actually pushing people around. And that makes me a little bit more useful, but unfortunately, I'm kind of off to the side of the screen right now. Didn't quite get the framing on this one perfect, uh, but I am caught in a little fight there and managed to drop somebody in the pit. Unfortunately, they dropped my partner, Jaden, in at the same time, and then I managed to grab hold of them and realize here that the servo isn't quite doing what I want it to do, but it does still thankfully manage to release, and that leads us for the win. However, uh, that win came at a big, big cost, that servo that is in there, because it's uh, been supercharged and it's running on LiPo voltages, it stripped the gears out because they are, it is just a, a small plastic geared servo, and it stripped the gears out, which meant that our next fight, I didn't have uh, the servo moving and I didn't have time to fix it, so yeah, that fight didn't go very well, and instead I ended up in the pit, just like that which was quite annoying. Uh, so then that guy got put to the side and it was time for some 1v1 fights. Okay, so this was my second fight of the day with the 1v1 bot. This is the one with the uh, wedge on the front. And as you can see, it still has the same issue as the grabber in terms of uh, the back is too heavy and it rears up every time I drive forwards. However, the flipper, uh, the hinge flipper actually really, really helps with that. It keeps that flipper on the floor, which means that even though the arms go skywards, the, uh, the actual dustpan stays on the floor and I am able to grab hold of them, which is really nice. Now, this fight, I did love this fight. It was a nice back and forth uh, between two kind of pusher robots. And uh, yeah, uh, this, is, this is just a, an interesting little match up here. So as I said, and you can see, all the way through this fight, that this same issue I was showing, I was ta I'm talking about with the the rearing up backwards every time I try and drive forwards, and it does get me into trouble occasionally. Like in this position here, it didn't quite out work out in my favor there. But in some some cases, it does actually work out in my favor. The rearing up backwards keeps them up a little bit off the ground, which makes them easier to push around for some reason. So I that was kind of serendipitous and worked out pretty well in my favor. Um, but yeah, I, there are still some, some points in this fight where I get into a little bit of trouble. Uh, but overall, it was a good, good driving fight and it was a good uh, test of this little robot and what it could, what it could actually do. Um, yeah, so mostly now that both the pits are open, we're both just trying to jam each other down those pits because of course that is the aim and thankfully I managed that one in this fight. So moving from one of the best fights to uh, one of the worst fights. So this is against Shrapnel, which is one of the big spinners in the com our competition. And immediately uh, he gets a big hit and knocks off the plastic underlay on the bottom of my dustpan, which is not good. I note to self, definitely use epoxy next time. He also hits my wheels and knocks the silicon off. Now, this isn't a huge deal because the shape of the, uh, the wheel holes actually allows that silicon to get itself back in again, but it takes a little bit of moving around. And unfortunately, he was on top of me the whole time, and as you can see, he then caught hold of one of my silicon wheels and it wrapped around his blade. So we had to call a cease and an unstick, 
And as you can see here, this silicon is really, really wrapped around in there and it's super stretched at this point, but it springs back into shape perfectly. So I'm really happy with how this wheel held up. Like it got hit by a titanium spinner and it didn't break and it wrapped all the way up in there and it still like kept going. And as you see, uh, they do leave it off the wheel because that's where it was before the hit happened. And I am actually managed, I do actually manage to get that wheel or that silicon tire back onto that wheel. Uh, it just takes a bit of maneuvering around and there you go, it's pretty much back there now. Uh, thankfully, the, uh, the foam sidewalls worked really well here. These foam sidewalls were designed specifically for this spinner in mind because it was the spinner, of course, that took off the plastic sidewalls in the last, uh, in the last match that we fought with a dustpan. However, without the, uh, the dustpan fully there, it is getting some hits on that dustpan and uh, ripping that dustpan to shreds. Like it's done a lot of damage to that right now. So definitely something I need to strengthen up, but thankfully he gets a few kind of lancing blows on the hinge mechanism I have there and it's still going strong. There's not an issue with that at all really. Uh, but as you can see, I do kind of need to glue these tires onto these wheels because I had this whole issue this entire time and then ended up upside down with the switch out and the switch got hit there. So the switch was completely blown apart and the robot stopped moving, which meant I lost this fight. So having not done very well in uh, the one-on-ones, we're gonna move back to the two-on-twos. I've now repaired the two-on-two bot. And as you can see, removed the actual servo out of it to try and help with those balance issues. The servo wasn't doing anything anyway, it was busted. And I've added some extra foam to the sidewalls to give it a little bit more grip. Um, and yeah, and then this fight, this fight was a, a nice little uh, two on two fight against Dr. Claus, who is definitely the best grabber in our league. The wide open jaws of Dr. Claus get around pretty much anything. Uh, and with the 10 second grab rule, it is enough time for him to usually grab somebody and then dump them in the pits if the pits are open. So. You can kind of push them around a lot, but as soon as those pits are open, then uh, you're in trouble, basically. So, and of course, as with all of the uh, all of the fights, um, with just pushes involved, it's a, basically just a bit of a free for all until those pits open. And unfortunately, I got caught out and was right on top of those pits as the pit opened, and there wasn't really a whole lot I could do about that. I got high sided, and then my opponent, my uh, teammate, went down the pit as well, and we didn't do very well. But yeah, I mean, it still kind of worked without the servo, but it, it didn't really ever work as well as it did with the servo. And this is my final fight of the day. This is actually a fight for third place against Dr. Claus, uh, the robot I was talking about earlier that is really, really good at dumping people in the pits. Uh, so my robot is kind of bruised and battered by this point in the day. Things aren't quite working right. It's got a brand new switch soldered into it or kind of, uh, yeah, zombie soldered into it. It wasn't a, a good solder job. I definitely will say that right now. Uh, yeah, the flipper is quite busted and broken because, of course, that also got shattered in the, uh, in the shrapnel fight. And I've glued it back together, but it's nowhere near as low as it was before. So it's just not working very well. Plus, uh, this is actually the third time he's fought uh, a robot like this because, of course, um, yeah, I was uh, in a one with one fight with him and then also in that 2v2 fight. But here I got stuck on the edge of the pit and couldn't make my way out. So I ended up fourth overall uh, in the 1v1s. So there we go. That is uh, that for the day. Two brand new, well, <laughs> now beat up, but were brand new combat robots based on the dustpan design. Uh, as I was mentioning in the fights, I do have that issue where there's a lot of weight in the back of the robots because that is where the motors and all of the electronics and everything are. So they do jerk around quite a lot as I try and accelerate with them, which works okay with this hinge flipper. That hinge, uh, that hinge in the dustpan works really well because the robot arcs up and the hinges or the dustpan is still on the ground. Even though the arms aren't, that's totally fine. On this guy though, I just used a piece of juice bottle, uh, like a rounded piece of juice bottle to connect all of this stuff together. And while that gave it a little bit of leeway, uh, it still managed to like arc up and over. So uh, that was something that I might need to fix in the future. Um, yeah, the servo didn't help Matt as much either because of course I added extra weight uh, down to the back too. So I think 
I would uh, not do this juice bottle style hinge in here again. I would either do it the old school way, which was the, the hard uh, plastic print together, or I would do it the hinge way. The hinges, like I said, I, I'm so, so glad with these hinges. It's literally just a couple of eyelet hooks and some M4 bolts, and that's it. And it's a nice little hinge that worked surprisingly well. Um, this guy could probably have benefited from some more weight in the actual dustpan itself to keep that dustpan down a little bit better, especially in the, uh, the shrapnel fight where it got blown to pieces. That wasn't great. Um, but there's, there's things that I can improve on. However, I think we're going to go away from the dustpan robot now. I do uh, kind of want to get some spinners back up and running, get some more uh, weapons going on things. However, if I do come back to the dustpan style, I think we're going to go back to the dustpan grabber style. This guy was good fun while he lasted, um, but I'm pretty sure he didn't last because I was using my high speed uh, servo mod that I pulled out of absolutely quackers, which worked fine for a hammer, but didn't work very well for a grabber. So we're going to have to uh, change that up and not do that again in the future. We'll probably end up using some Metal Gear servos for an actual grabber in the future, but I do want to redo this design, probably, like I said, with the hinge and, yeah, a better servo so that it actually works a little bit better. Um, yeah, and then also I do say, so I came fourth in the 1v1s, but Jaden and I did manage to pull off a third in the 2v2s. We got just enough points to make it in to that third place spot. So I'm, I'm quite happy with that. Despite the fact that this grabbing arm did break, we still did decently uh, for, the, uh, for the meat. So yeah, hope you guys have enjoyed that one and I will see you in the next video.